There's a place somewhere in Greece where it seems like heaven meets earth and they call it Meteora. Meteora got its name from the monasteries that sit high atop the stone pillars that may seem to appear suspended in air, hence the ancient Greek word Meteoros. Does it sound like a mysterious place that tickles your imagination and curiosity? Well, this video will provide you with just enough information as to what's in Meteora, ways to get there, how to visit the monasteries and dress code, the best side trip, where to stay, and where we eat. So just sit back and relax, and we'll take you there. Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to Delphi and Meteora through Via Tour. There are four ways to get to Meteora. By car, if you want to rent a car, by KTL bus, by express train, and by a tour company bus. We booked a two-day trip to Delphi and Meteora through Via Tour. But you can also book just a day trip to either of these two places. I will tell you more about the rental car, the bus and express train later in this video. For now, our tour bus will take us first to Delphi. The site is built in the middle of the slope of a mountain called Mount Parnassus. It is such a beautiful location. So we just arrived here at Delphi at the sanctuary of Apollo. The tour bus dropped us off here at the entrance of the ticket office and then he will pick us up later. For those who are driving a car, they can park on the side street. So this is the Roman Forum. These are columns supporting the arcade shops where pilgrims will pick up some last minute souvenir shopping here before entering the main gate to the sanctuary. This is the secret way that will lead up to the Temple of Apollo. This archaeological site is the Sanctuary of Apollo dedicated to the god Apollo, the god of sun, music and prophecy. So ancient Greeks consider this site the center of the world and they would come here to seek advice from the oracle. It's like a fortune teller that will prophesy. So pilgrims or believers would come here to ask just about anything regarding their lives, marriages and decisions, major decisions. The Athenian treasury is where they house votive offerings made by their citizens built of Parian marble, a highly prized flawless marble quarried from the island of Paris. This is the Temple of Apollo, home to the famous Oracle of Delphi, called the Pythia, a Greek prophetess or priestess. The Pythia was highly regarded for it was believed that she channeled prophecies from their god Apollo himself. This is the theater where singing and instrumental music contests of the Pythian games are held. To get the best view of the entire site, I'm gonna go up a little bit. If Olympia has the Olympic Games in honor of their god Zeus, Delphi has Pythian Games in honor of their god Apollo. But we didn't have enough time to check out the stadium and the archaeological museum. For lunch, the tour bus took us to Taverna Omphalos, and I had beef steak with rice, line and steak with pasta, and our daughter grilled chicken with rice. It was fine, but not our favorite. Now what's the food? It was belly. We're gonna head to Meteora. Then we continue our journey to Meteora with a quick stop over to check the monument of the Battle of Thermopylae, which was fought in 480 BC, considered as one of the most prominent battles of both the Second Persian Invasion of Greece and the wider Greco-Persian Wars. From Delphi, it's another three hours before we get to the town of Kalabaka for our overnight accommodation at this hotel. The two-day trip to Delphi and Meteora from Athens through Viator includes air-conditioned vehicle, professional guide, overnight accommodation, entrance tickets to Delphi archaeological site, to Meteora monasteries, breakfast, and dinner. We're gonna go there for dinner. Dinner is buffet-style with a wide array of food choices, including desserts. Everything is so scrumptious, and so is their breakfast. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's gonna be really exciting. We're gonna be visiting two monasteries, and so far, I'm really liking this tour group because I didn't have to think or plan about anything. Basically, they plan everything for us. 
Whether you're taking a bus or train, your final destination is Kalambaka. Then you can either take a taxi, a local bus, hike or take a guided tour to Meteora. But because the bus involves a bus change at Trikala and the train involves a bus transfer in 2024 due to track problems, it is recommended that you stay for the night in Kalambaka. If you're renting a car, you can either stay at the town of Kalambaka or the smaller village of Kastraki. There's accommodation for all budgets and also campsites in both places. These almost cylindrical rocks that sprout from the ground are the rock masses that were formed some 60 million years ago and their unique and varied shapes were sculpted over time by earthquakes, rain and wind. In a landscape that is almost inaccessible, monks settled in these so-called columns of the sky from the 11th century onwards. 24 of these monasteries were built despite incredible difficulties, but today only 6 monasteries are active, with a smaller number of monks or nuns residing in Mithura. Mithura has been a film location for a number of movies from 1981 to 2011 so far. In 1988, the monasteries and their evocative landscape were added to the UNESCO World Heritage List. mind-boggling those monasteries atop this massive stone pillars that rises from the ground. It's so breathtaking. That is where one of James Bond movie was filmed. First we're gonna visit the holy monastery of Saint Stephen. So taking pictures and videos are not allowed inside and the dress code is for women uh, should wear a dress that covers the knee so it should be below the knee and no sleeveless shirts for both men and women. Built on a rocky outcrop, Saint Stephen Monastery has a bridge to access it. With no steps to climb, this monastery is the most easily accessible. The main church of the monastery is small but beautiful, adorned with frescoes and icons. Unfortunately, we cannot take pictures and videos inside, including at their museum, which houses a collection of artifacts and relics. The monastery was founded by the monks as early as the 12th century, but was severely damaged in the Second World War. Then we're off to the second monastery. Rosano Monastery, which was founded in the mid-1500s and is dedicated to St. Barbara Rosano, a Christian nun. Today, around 15 nuns reside here and welcome people from all over the world. Compared to the other rocks where monasteries were built, this monastery has a lower elevation, which makes it more accessible. The monastery, although small but cozy, consists of a three-story building. It is accessed by several steps and a long bridge constructed in 1930. If you're not joining a guided tour, check the opening and closing hours of each monastery that you're planning to visit, including its dress code. Some monasteries may provide a wrap over skirts for women who are wearing pants and shawls to cover bare shoulders, and this may be free for rent or for sale. What do you think? Another very impressive monastery, right? Meteora is amazing and is highly recommended when visiting Greece. We're stopping here for lunch before driving back to Athens. If you find value with this content, please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you'll know when the next video will be released. Thank you for watching and have a very blessed day.